Hello and good evening everybody, although you will watch this in the morning. Um, first good news, I feel a lot better. My voice is still a little bit cracking, but I got good rest in and yeah, it's the best thing against the cold. So I feel a lot better. And yeah, it was an interesting afternoon full of soccer action. Um, yesterday I originally wanted to watch uh, PSG play uh, Lyon couldn't get to it, saw the highlights that PSG got up to a 2 nil lead and then got a penalty late that made, no, no, not Lille, Lille not Lyon, I'm already tired. So PSG against Lille ended 2-1, although it should have been 2-3 uh, higher for PSG. And yeah, it was not much of a contest. Napoli beat Napoli 5-1. So um, in the early afternoon, you know, I looked at the schedule, what one, one, what do I want to look at today? And there were not too many games, honestly, that uh, really stood out. The two that really stood out for me were almost at the same time. That was Arsenal against Liverpool and that was Fiorentina-Roma. Um, the Arsenal game at 6.30, Fiorentina-Roma at 6 o'clock. Yeah, so I have to watch those. And that meant that all the other games that I'm talking about now, um, I kind of watched not fully attentively or only saw very small fractures of it. Uh, actually, I uh, started off by seeing, okay, there's Manchester United playing at Bournemouth and I made myself some notes for once because I think it's better that way. And I started and it's 2-1 and I hear a lot of singing, blah, blah, blah. I see later, yeah, Manchester United made in the last minute the 2-1. Uh, they were 1-0 down, which at Bournemouth is a hard thing. They got the equalizer before uh, the break. And yeah, uh, got the winner. So actually, that's a big win for Manchester United. I saw them for the first time with the pink jerseys, which are not as annoyingly pink as I made them initially out to be. And Bournemouth has a really nice uh, jersey. I think if Ambrowood made Milan jerseys, that would be the one actually wearing a Milan jersey, special one today. Uh, so that game was over and then there was only Inter Genoa and I said, ah, maybe, yeah, Genoa got me in so much trouble. I put it, it is in the 20th minute, 2-0 for win Inter. Yeah, they made two within two minutes. And the from a little bit I was watching, I didn't see any Inter goals, but Inter was controlling the game uh, all the way. The Milan fan in me was to say, well, we beat, we gave them such a hard loss that, yeah, Inter had an easy game. And then... The realist in me says, yeah, Inter is unfortunately better than Milan. We saw it at the Derby. And yeah, they they have a, a good run at the moment. <laughs> you gotta say it. I Inter, I tried to write them off at the beginning of the season. No, they don't let themselves write off. They got ugly wins and now they keep winning and keep rising. So they could be the one team that really could, I'm not sure, challenge, but, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. And then, yeah, so 5-0 there, and I decided, okay, let's let the kids watch some movie, and I take it easy, enjoy the afternoon with my wife as well, and so it was, and once the movie was over, I put it on Real Madrid against uh, Rayo Vallecano, by that time I already saw already that, uh, you know, I was chatting with my subscriber Yanis that Pauk got 1-1 at Atromitos in Greece, uh, which is a big result for them. I really want Park to win the Greek Championship now. Uh, not only because I know Giannis, but I think they would deserve uh, a championship there. So this was first against, second against first. That's good. And then, you know, I was also looking at Lask playing in St. Burton, which ended in a 2-2 draw. Um, yes, I would have taken the draw probably before the game, but the way it went with a late uh, giving up a late equalizer, dominating the game, twice being in the lead, then you know, giving up cheap goals, uh, not putting the game away. It was kind of the theme going uh, for the last few weeks. Now, Lask has not won a game in five uh, rounds, which is not that disconcerting because the rest of the league, except Salzburg, is not that great. And Salzburg, we gave a good fight, but you know, it's time for a win again. So, yeah, it's a so and so result. But then, yeah, I said, okay, there's a 0 0 still between Real Madrid and Valladolid. And although I saw the shot stats that were thoroughly in favor of Real, uh, Real Madrid, I thought maybe <laughs> they are again, they're still not over the hump. Well, they got uh, an own goal. 
keep it in the 80th minute and then a penalty which was a clear penalty by Sergio Ramos and uh, that's exactly what Real Madrid needed to maybe get rolling again so yeah but then it was time for my two big games um, of course with the early game uh, the kick of early kick of in Italy I saw a little bit more Fiorentina against Roma what I saw is that it started out quite even and just at the moment where I thought Roma is taking a little bit control of the game uh, Fiorentina gets a penalty after a horrible, horrible, horrible uh, pass by Florenzi, puts it to Simeone, Diego Simeone's uh, boy, uh, who has a clear run on goal and yeah, he wanted that penalty. They reviewed it on VAR, uh, the way the goalkeeper is going there yeah. might be dubious, but I think it's an okay penalty and very to put that one away. Going to stay with that game now. Then Fiorentina actually had the better of the uh, beginning of the second half, and Chiesa, son of Enrico, there's the something is very big at um, uh, um, at Fiorentina. Really waltzed through the defense and made a wonderful uh, pass, but Simeone was way back, and then yeah, very two I think couldn't uh, clinch it either. Uh, um, was was saved by Olsen. Yeah, that should have made it 2-0 and then uh, Fiorentina was really playing it well but you could see that Roma is getting back into the game and speaking of sons, Justin Kleibert came in, <laughs> the son of Patrick Kleibert and yeah, it became uh, it became a game where Roma had chances and then uh, late in the game Florenzi uh, made the equalizer making up for his mistakes in the, to Romagnoli a few days ago and Jaco even had a big chance to make it 2-1. Um, yeah, Jaco has not scored in the Artemio Franchi, which is also an interesting fact to it. And then the Arsenal game, um, it was like, actually quite funny. I saw, almost, I saw the second part of the first half, uh, so I didn't see the um, uh, not given goal uh, where Firmino, I think, hit the bar and then Sané Ned it in, but one was a game for offside, which um, was dubious a little bit. Maybe they said that Sané was not in a uh, passive offside position. <sighs> yeah, I mean, uh, whenever the ball wa was played, the player who was receiving the ball was not offside. That's all I can say. Um, at that point, I thought that Arsenal had a bit more of the game, and you could actually see the atmosphere. So this was clearly the better game of the two. Uh, don't ask me why I watched the other one more. Uh, because I'm an Italophile, I guess. Um, it was a very open and good game. Arsenal having a little bit more, but um, I also had the feeling that Liverpool is the, you know, more mature team, and you could uh, take that away. They were of course playing in the purple jersey, which made for a nice color match. But I just don't like uh, Liverpool in purple and orange. Um, purple and red maybe, but purple and orange, I, 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 I don't get. Yeah, and I think uh, they hit the post again, Virgil van Dijk, because Leno came out uh, of the goal a little bit unmotivated, and probably that should have been the lead for um, Liverpool. They got the lead uh, in the 60th, just at the moment where I said the uh, Fiorentina game was not... Uh, I thought, let's check the other game. I put it in exactly at that moment, Milner makes the 1-0 again. Sané makes a cross in that Leno wants to catch but doesn't get to it, deflects it and by another deflection it gets to Milner who has to just shoot in the empty net. Liverpool seemed to be in control from that point on, um, but nope. Arsenal made the equalizer through Lacazette, which was a weird goal because he uh, also Alisson Becker came a little bit too far out. So uh, Lacazette still has the ball, turns around and then shoots it in and almost empty and it reminded me a little bit about an ice hockey goal where they circle around the goal and then uh, the wrap around. So 1-1 one, one in that game. Uh, was, was a good game but I think no one is happy with that result, to be honest. And then yeah, should I watch Juve beat up Cagliari? Well, I didn't beat them up but it was a 3-1 win. Or shall I watch Barcelona against Rayo? I really didn't watch either of those very but I watched a little bit more Barcelona Rayo. I, I, uh, when I turned on, it was 1 1. I saw Suarez made the uh, early goal, uh, was equalizer. 
Then Rayo, uh, the, the beginning of the second half was a little weird because uh, Barcelona tried to control the game, but Rayo put a lot of work and a lot of effort in and actually made the 2-1. Um, before that, Ter Stegen had, or had already a big save. He couldn't do anything because the ball hit the post and then right to the Rayo attacker. And I thought, oh, this is going to be hard for Barcelona. And it proved to be hard for Barcelona. Um, they were seriously bothered, but it seemed to be toothless in a way. Attacking, attacking, but I think the the work rate that Rayo put in actually um, did them. And so Dembele and Suarez could make two more goals to get a win for Barcelona. So that's that. Other results that I thought were interesting were Germany, first of all, Leverkusen, after having 11 goals in two games, suddenly lose 1 4 at home to Hoffenheim. Uh, yeah, Belarabi, who scored many, many, many goals, uh, was injured after he made it 1 1, and there went that. Uh, Dortmund got a lucky win at Wolfsburg, and Bayern did the opposite, they got an unlucky 1 1 draw. They, in the 80th minute, I, I, saw, I saw the score at 0 0. I had a, uh, on my phone and I just wanted to see the detail at that moment Gnabry made the 1-0. Uh, there was a pair call for a penalty that was not given. I think Freiburg goal was disallowed, but Bayern had a much more larger part, part, part of the game. Should have made it. And yeah, they're going to get the equalizer. <laughs> I'm smiling because this makes me happy. Um, will also make me, maybe makes me happy that I saw Bayern play in all red, uh, which makes so much more sense. There's also talk about this new Super League that I might use some time uh, during next week to talk about uh, over there. I'm just not yet buying it. We saw this three years ago and um, I came nothing to it. Well, let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with my assessments of the games that I watched, um, and whether I can add more to it. Um, Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I'll give you a little bit more about the game. Uh, tomorrow I probably will only, only watch the Milan game because I'm again out. So uh, we'll see that and I won't have a morning um, a review on Monday because I will drive a different car for two days. That's how it goes. Well, I will talk to you soon. Bye.